What's going on my fellow Kino Lords? I got the Pear Bear here with me, the man, the myth, the legend. <laughs> um, he's in town for Thanksgiving and uh, he was like, hey, you wanna go see Saltburn and uh, do a uh, video review on it for your channel? I was like, fuck yeah, dude, let's, let's do it. <laughs> um, so obviously we, we went to go see Saltburn, which is written and directed by uh, Emerald Fennell. And um, obviously the only film that I've seen from her is Promising Young Woman. Is that her first film? Yeah, that's okay. her direct tour. They okay, do. cool. So not completely uncultured here. <laughs> um, and honestly, I went into this film really blind. I don't know about you, Perry, but I didn't really know anything about this film going into it. Um, yeah. All I knew is that it was written and directed by Fennell and it starred Barry Kagan and that was really it. Um, I didn't watch any trailers or anything at all, so... Um, I went into the film pretty raw, and I gotta say, personally, I enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, yeah, this is such a different film than Promising Young Woman. Uh, this is a film that it's, I feel like, leaves you a little bit more to think about than Promising Young Woman. Um, I think it has that going for it, and that's not, to down, that's not really to down Promising Young Woman, because I'm not sure at which point which film I like better. But I do think that this film, in a way, is a little bit more complex and um, has a lot of different layers to it and doesn't really kind of just give you an obvious person to root for when you're watching the film. I think that this is a film that is going to complicate feelings for a lot of people. And I think it's good for that. Um, that's one of the things that I liked about it because it's unique for that reason. And I think the presentation overall is a step up from Promising Young Woman. Um, I, think, I think the presentation here is much more, it's much more like matured and it's much more creative. And yeah, like overall, um, I, I think one of the things I was struggling with while watching this film, especially by the end of it was, what is this film really trying to like say to me? You know, like what is mm -hmm. this, what is the ultimate like, what are the thematic takeaways of this film? What is the overall thesis of the film? Yeah, and I'm still kind of struggling with that. I'm still pondering on it. But ultimately, I think this film is about multiple different things. I think on one hand, this is a film about the difference between obsession and love. And it's also a film about, um, obviously, classism is a huge element to yeah. this film. And I would say Parasite is it like it yeah. was a big influence on this film. Yeah, like it's a, it's a really weird underdog lower class getting the better of the upper class kind of tale. And but it's <laughs> again it's really like Barry Kagan in this film is plays a weirdo, shocker on Shock Street. Um and he just does an excellent job. Like he is so fucking good at playing this kind of character, but this is his most, this is his most layered character and I think my favorite performance from him uh, th that I've seen. I don't think I've ever seen him like completely star in a movie before. And he did a really great job. Well, I mean, he was, this, I guess you'd say the star of Killing of Sacred Deer. I guess, I guess that's more supporting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he does have a lot of screen time in that film for sure. Yeah. But this is like, almost like, pretty much every scene of this yeah, film is, right. is fucking Barry Kagan. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like he, his character is, again, I, I really don't want to spoil too much. I might actually talk about a little bit of spoilers later because I kind of have to. But for right now, I'll just say that his character is, again, it's, he's supposed to be like the villain of this movie in a way, but he's in a way, I think a lot of people will not view him in that kind of one dimensional lens. Um, because again, like I just think the situations are very, complicated in a way that um yeah you can say that yeah dude he's a fucked up person for sure but in another way you can kind of not really feel all that sorry for the victims of this movie um but anyway uh, before I get too far off in the weeds I'll just say that um this is a I think a thematically confusing and complicated film but in a way I kind of enjoyed the element of it because it felt different and it gave me a lot to chew on after the fact. I think the only thing that I really didn't like about the movie was that, I'm pretty sure Perry will, will agree, is that it kind of gives too much away in the end. Yeah. Um, like, 
there were some like before it really starts giving stuff away i was liking like the little hints at certain things I'm like okay interesting and then it just kind of goes all the way and um doesn't really have any sense of self-control and yeah. just kind of feeds the audience way too much about like specific things that happen in the story that we really didn't need to know like in one way it's cool to be like oh okay that's that's neat i guess to know that that's how that happened but when you walk away from the film there's less to ponder about in regards to that element of the film right um emerald Fennell should have trusted the audience more to infer certain uh beats of the story rather than literally just cut back and explain this is how this happened and this is how that led to yeah. this um i think that's one of like my biggest uh problem like you said my biggest complaint with the film is yeah. i feel like emerald Fennell should have trusted her audience more Absolutely. and i don't know if that's necessarily a studio thing i don't want to necessarily blame uh you know emerald Fennell completely but I, I need a film that trusts its audience more. I hate over-explaining in movie, and I feel like this film does it a little bit too much. But I will say, I, overall, I really enjoyed the film. I really love the moral grayness of the character. Um, I, I just recently saw Priscilla, which is a great film. Uh, Sofia Coppola, love you. Um, <laughs> Uh, and seeing Jacob Elordi in uh, Priscilla playing Elvis, like, he's absolutely transformative. And that made me even more excited about this film because he's not just a heartthrob. You know, he's not just a pretty face. He can really bring it as far as, an, you know, as far as acting go. And I, I really think he's really good in this film. Um, but I would say I was m m more impressed with... Um, his performance in Priscilla, but that's a whole nother conversation. Um, and again, like, one thing I really liked about this film is how it talks about how kind of hedonism is a way for people to cower away from death and, like, confronting death. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I thought that was a really interesting aspect of the film. I feel like the film is most compelling when it focuses on... Um, Jacob Elordi and Barry Kagan's relationship to me those are the most compelling scenes in the film yeah. some of the scenes with like some of the side characters to me aren't as compelling yeah um I for, agree. for me I think like the first 40 minutes of this movie are like perfect like I love the first act of mm -hmm. the film I love the way Barry Kagan and Jacob Elordi's relationship was built up um and I love like the way uh, th they shoot Jacob Elordi almost as like Emerald Fennell is like seducing the audience to cr trying to like get you to understand Barry Kagan's like uh, you know kind of perspective almost like you're uh, almost like uh, he's beco like becoming your friend just the way yeah. Barry Kagan and Jacob Elordi are becoming friends you yeah. know it's like it's a uh, um, you you really understand like where the obsession comes from yep um I, I think the best way to go into this film is not knowing anything about it literally all i knew about this film is jacob lordy was in it barry kagan's in it and barry kagan's hog was in it and i'm like <laughs> that's enough for me right there i am sold um and but, I promise you, it does deliver on Barry Kagan's dong. Yes, it does. Yes. It's got to gotta be patient, right? Right. <laughs> I was about to say, like, uh, y'all built it up so... I, like, from what I heard, it was mm. built up so much. And if they didn't deliver, I would have been very disappointed. <laughs> I would have walked out of the theater. <laughs> and demanded my money back. Yeah. <laughs> Said, sir, I was told that Barry Kagan was going to hang schlong, and I did not get that. <laughs> um, but, yeah. I... Yeah, I, I just, I really enjoyed this movie. I think, uh, for me personally, I know you're a little conflicted about it, but mm -hmm. I do think I like this more than Promising Young Woman. Mm -hmm. uh, structurally and just thematically, I just find it a bit more satisfying, even if mm -hmm. there is too much, you know, spoon feeding in some part. Yeah. Uh, and like you said, from I think from a filmmaking perspective, it's just a step up. Like, this film yeah. really has some gorgeous shots in it. I definitely agree that, like, from a filmmaking perspective, it's it's a step up. It's From a filmmaking perspective, from a conceptual perspective, from a thematic pr perspective, it's all more ambitious, for sure. Yeah. Um, there's just something about Promising Young Woman and how, yeah, like, the, the thesis is much more to the point. It's simpler. It's but, more clear-cut, for sure. But it's very well done and it 
it it does a great job at presenting its thesis and um overall like it was just a really entertaining and effective film this one is as well but again it's to me i i still have in a way some conflicted feelings about it because it is a more conflicting type of film like i think a lot i think a lot of people who do see this film are going to walk out of it uh feeling conflicted feeling mixed on it because it is a film that is filled with mixed feelings on its own uh it's kind of meant to give the audience mixed feelings about what the hell they just saw um in terms of like meaning and theme and everything like that um but in a lot of ways i admire those films the most yeah. i i respect the films the most that don't give the audience easy answers don't give them those simple solutions where they can just walk home and not think about the film any any longer i i want like those lingering you know questions again like i said if there wasn't so much over explaining yeah. in certain places the, it, the film would have made me uh, ponder more. I think the film honestly balances its tone better than Promising Young Woman because with Promising Young Woman there are parts where I'm like, am I supposed to find this tense? Am I supposed to find this comedic? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is clearly supposed to be comedic but this comedy feels like it's out of play. But yeah. I feel like with here I feel like the comedy felt more natural to the story and the comedic moments didn't really feel out of play. Mm -hmm. um, and it definitely gave some uh, dimension to the film. Like, yes, it is a thriller, but it still doesn't completely lose its identity of being a black comedy. I would yeah, say, I like, in the, f like, maybe, like, the first half, it's more of a black comedy, and it kind of shifts into more a, 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 more into a thriller. I can agree with Again, it's been a long time since I've seen Promising Young Woman, but... I think I can, I can see where you're coming from there. Uh, one thing that I wanted to touch on that you mentioned earlier, uh, you mentioned something about how um, hedonism is kind of a way to, for especially with the wealthy in this film, like a way for them to kind of like escape the reality of death. And so mm -hmm. you said something like that. Um, yeah, I I hundred percent agree. Like especially with what happens like in the third act of this film and how the wealthy characters react to a certain situation, it um. It kind of does show you that that's kind of exactly what's happening. Mm -hmm. um, just the way that they deal with reality itself is very dishonest. Yeah. And um, and I just love the way it portrayed that because it's, it's honestly like darkly comedic in a way. And um, I like that because there's this one scene in the film. It's not really spoiling much, but there's a there's a scene in the film where um, one of the wealthy characters is talking to Barry Kagan's character, and he's like, "Yo, you know this." this moment for you in this house and all that, this is just a dream for you. But for me, this is my life. And it's funny because I think that's just kind of like a dishonest and ironic statement, especially like what we see in the third act of this film is mm -hmm. even though, yeah, to, for the wealthy, this is your life and this is your house. But ultimately it is a way just to keep yourself in a dreamlike world. Exactly. Um, um, so yeah, your pretty face and everything you own won't mean shit when you're deep in the dirt. Absolutely, and I film kind of explores that too in a way, and I really enjoyed that. Um, I also um, one thing I was really iffy on is kind of the framing device of like Barry Kagan talking directly to the camera. Mm -hmm. I feel like the film kind of cut oh, yeah. back to him too much. Yeah, it's kind of reminded me of that film American Animals, which, funny enough, Barry Kagan's also in that film. Yeah, where you see like the real life people involved in the events of American Animal literally talking to directly to the camera and explaining certain things yeah. and it's like i feel like if the f there wasn't so much of that in the film yeah. it would have made it a little bit more compelling yeah um I, I do gotta say though i did i did appreciate that it at least like built up to a payoff when it came to that oh that at the payoff yeah. yes that i enjoyed it's just more so prior to that i was like i'm not really yeah. loving this framing device yeah I mean, this kind of story device. Yeah, even in the beginning, I was a little conflicted about it because it starts off kind of that way. Like, pretty much the opening of this film is kind of establishing that framing device in a way. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, and they kind of like, it's like a recurring thing as you're watching the film. It's not like that frequent, but I do agree that when it comes on, you're just kind of like, you, it just feels, it just almost feels like it's just like distracting in a way. Yeah. Um, and again, almost kind of goes back to that spoon feedy thing. You know, right. it's like, we don't need you to like, tell me your feelings. We don't need you to explain, you know, what's going on. It's for something that we just watched kind of thing. 
Right. Um, but again, I do think that ultimately, at least by the end of it, it does reveal something, and it and it has a really great payoff. Yeah. Um, I also, um, yeah. One thing I also really admired about the film is, like I said, how much I love, like, the first four minutes. I really dug, like, the editing and kind of, mm -hmm. like, the montage style of how their, you know, relationship was built up. They don't, uh, there, there's definitely, like, important emotional moments that you can understand, like, how they become friends over a course. Yeah. But it doesn't fixate on that too much where, you know, it just... Uh, we're kind of, you know, uh, it doesn't, where the story is not shifting fast enough to get into the second act. I yeah. think the second act for the, me is personally like a uh, bit of the more like meandering part of the film for I me. See that. Like for me, like I think the first act is honestly might be the strongest act of the movie. Uh, the first and the third act. Uh, the, fir the first act I think is the strongest. The third I think is really strong. Like I said, there's just too a little bit too yeah. much spoon feeding. I think I think if it wasn't for that spoon feeding element of its conclusion, I think the third act would have been the strongest. For yeah, me. that's how I feel. Um, and the second act has, by the way, we should have said this like right off the bat, but this film has a lot of crude depictions of sexuality. Yeah. Um, re again, and that's why I said like Barry Keegan's character in this film is so fucking weird. Um, but yeah, so I, I would say like you know. In terms of, I mean, you're already watching this review, and I don't know if you've seen it already. Um, but for those who haven't seen it yet, just just know that there is, like, a lot of very crude and bizarre depictions of sexuality in this mm -hmm. film. Just in case you're planning to see it with somebody, just kind of know what you're getting into. Uh, watch, you know, don't say, I wouldn't, like, unless you're, like, really cool with your mom or something. But maybe not the best, like, go see this movie with your mom or something. Don't do what I did and watch The Neon Demon with my mom. <laughs> oh, my God. That was uncomfortable. Um, but, yeah, it goes pretty far. Like, this film is very, it goes pretty far. No, no, with... no. It wasn't The Neon Demon. It was Only God Forgives. Don't do what I did and watch <laughs> Only God Forgives with, your, with mom. your mom. That's what you mean. It's a, it's a perfect Mother's Day film. <laughs> um... So yeah, just so just know that, just know that it's uh, it goes pretty far with it. Um, I get to see some people just kind of like getting really weirded out by its depictions of sexuality, but I mean it's for a purpose. Again, I think like thematically speaking, it's it's there for 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 actual like meaning. It's not just there to be weird. Yeah. Um, because not only is it like telling in terms of what it means for the character and about his personality and his end goals, but. Um, I think, like, thematically speaking, overall, it serves a huge purpose. Yeah. Um, I just really love how this film deals with, like, like uh, loneliness and alienation mm -hmm. and poverty and, you know, how it pushes people to do things that you, that you don't even feel like would be humanly, you know, they just feel like... Like, you know this person so well, but mm -hmm. you feel like you know this person, you can't believe... Uh, let me rephrase that. I love how this film deals with loneliness and alienation, mm -hmm. and it pushes us uh, to do things that uh, are, feel like it's outside of ourselves, like yeah. something we wouldn't normally do. Yeah, I mean, when you think about it, I think both the main characters in this film, um, in a way, they were both yearning for a genuine connection yeah um at least that's kind of how it starts i right. think for both of them really when you think about it um they just go they, about the wrong way yeah. of you know finding that connection yeah. because you see kind of how like you know the rich elite uh you know view barry kagan's mm -hmm. uh character they view him as like a a toy you know like a piece of amusement yeah. rather than a human being it's like well how do you expect to find any real human connection from that yeah and uh again you know just uh having you know that amount of wealth that amount of power you know it really separates you and alienates you from everyone else yeah even even if you you're you know have a party with 300 people you don't know anybody even, that's yeah. there nobody gives a shit about you yeah. and i love how that's kind of you know tied into the the third act of the movie and i know like there's plenty of people that will probably say oh barry kagan's character you know he wasn't really yearning for any kind of like human connection he had his end goal right from the start and honestly if that's your interpretation i think that's valid in a way right um, but i don't see the film that that is the, as that black and white yeah i think i think the film was a little bit more 
complex than that. Um, but even even if let's say even if again let's say that was let's say he did have an end goal from the, from the beginning, you can still understand why he would kind of go about doing what he's doing. Right. Um, even though it's twisted and again immoral, um, it doesn't come off as like he doesn't come off as like this one dimensional villain of the film. Right. And that's why I appreciate that. Like that, that's why I appreciated a lot out of it. Yeah, um, I can definitely see people watching this film and being disappointed that the film doesn't really seem to have a clear-cut thesis. Yeah. Um, for me, that doesn't bother me too much. Um, I think with some films, uh, depending on the subject matter and, like, how, uh, what they're trying to express, you need that clear-cut thesis. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to say that's like, oh, every film needs to have a clear-cut thesis. I need to be able to sum up in one sentence what that film was about because yeah. I don't think every film should be boiled down uh, to be that simple it, to be summed up in just one clear cut thesis. Yeah. It's like you don't watch 2001 A Space Odyssey and sum up what that movie is in one sentence, yeah. do you? Yeah, I agree, man. Again, like, I think right now, I'm de when it comes to the film, I just kind of have conflicted feelings because it is, a com again, it is just, a film is, I feel, I feel like the film is meant to be that way. Mm -hmm. um, come out not necessarily knowing exactly how you feel about it. Um, but in another way, like, I really appreciated it for that. And, um, yeah, I mean, overall, like, I really, I still really enjoyed this film a lot. Um, I still really enjoyed it. I definitely want to watch it again sometime soon. Um. I need to rewatch both of these movies. Yeah. Uh, uh, Saltburn and Promising Young Woman. Yeah, same. Because I haven't watched Promising Young Woman since we reviewed it. Maybe let's do, like, a double feature one day. Just Maybe. watch them both back to back. Yeah. Um. But yeah, uh, even though like I have some issues with this movie, for sure, um, I still think it's an interesting piece. Um, and again, it's like it's not like the most. I mean, in a way, it is like it's in a way it is very unique. But in a lot of ways, you can still see like what other films inspired it as well. Yeah. Um, but I still think what it did was like what what it set out to do. It did it really well. Um, because you can see, like, you, you know, Parasite. You can see The Servant, which The Servant yeah. inspired Parasite. You know, yeah. therefore kind of inspired you, you this tons movie. Of, and you have tons of movies that are kind of like that, where, like, you have this outsider coming in who, like, convinces himself that he's, like, the friend of the family kind yeah. of thing. And then all of a sudden, shit starts going awry. People don't know what the fuck's going on. Right. You know, people don't know who to trust. People put too much trust into this outsider kind of thing. We've seen that in, like, in a lot of different films. Right. But um, this film definitely does it like in its own kind of way. And I think through the presentation and through some of the more bizarre stuff that we get in this film uh, makes it stand out among all of them as well. Um, so, yeah, if you have any more to say, go ahead. But I think I'm ready to give ratings. Yeah, I'm ready to give ratings. All right. So I'm going to I was struggling for a while. I was struggling for a while. But now that I've talked about it, I feel a bit more comfortable with what I'd give this film. So I'm gonna give Saltburn a soft seven out of ten. Okay. Mm, I'm feeling a bit more generous, but I think I'm right. We're right about where you are. I'm feeling like a mid seven out of ten on this. Solid one. seven. That's yeah. a fair grade. Who knows though? I feel like this is a film that really could grow on me more. No, it's funny because I I also rated Promising Young Woman a seven. I can't remember if it was like <laughs> a strong seven or soft seven, but it was definitely in the seven range. Yeah. <laughs> I think I gave it a seven too. I could be wrong, but yeah. yeah. Either way, it's they're both great films. Yeah, I just feel like this one is gonna stick with me a little bit more than Promising Young Woman. Yeah, for sure. Again, again, I really can't stress enough that I feel like this film does give you a lot to chew on. I mean, mm -hmm. shit, this has been a pretty long review. It's like twenty five minutes almost. Yeah, at this we point. we really like really boiled down yeah. the themes of this movie. Yeah, and it didn't come off like. We weren't even forcing it. It's just the movie just gives you a lot to, like, ponder on and think yeah, about and exactly. discuss after after it's over. And I think that's, like, a really great thing that it has about it, a great quality of the film. Yeah, um, I'm excited to see what else Emerald Fennell does. And, I mean, Jacob Elordi, like I said, this is his year between this and Priscilla. Like, yeah. uh, I'm really excited to see him in more films. Like, I need more Jacob Elordi in my <laughs> life. <laughs> I, mean, I haven't seen Priscilla yet. I'm oh, like, I'm excited I'll for you watch, to watch it. it. Uh, I'll watch it sometime soon. Tomorrow, I'm probably going to watch um, Ridley Scott's Napoleon. So, see how that goes. 
I heard it's very historically accurate. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Ridley Scott yeah. <laughs> uh, addressing the critic. Get alive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. I'm really excited for that one, though, too. Um, so, And then we still got other films coming out, too. We got, like, Zone of Interest and Poor Things and all kinds of great cinema coming yeah, out. Yeah. I'm uh, excited for There's it. even stuff that I still need to see. Uh, when evil lurks that kind of went under oh, the yeah. radar I, heard I about watch that, one. that yeah but alright guys that's about it uh, thank you everybody for watching this review thank you Perry for coming out and doing this with me I appreciate Thanks for it having me. and a problem dude um, it was a pleasure and uh, that's it if you really enjoyed this review please make sure to give it a thumbs up and share it amongst your friends and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to be updated on more film related content oh and don't forget, uh, if you would like to become a $5 patron hey. and join the Discord, <laughs> you get to yeah. talk cinema with Carlos, myself, Blair, and all our Kino Lord friends. It is a wonderful time. We have movie nights. We have film discussions at least two, three times yeah. a week. Uh, we're talking games, trivia. It is Everything. so much fun. It's the if, whole package. If you're a cinephile, <laughs> I mean, it is the most fun you will have with your clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> we're actually going to have a our second annual uh, Secret Santa thing at the end of the year, too. Yeah. And that's last year where it was... That was one of the most wholesome and heartwarming events I've ever attended. It was just beautiful. Yeah. And I can't wait to do it again this year. It really feels like a second family. Yeah. Well, thanks, Perry. I appreciate that, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you already heard me say it. Like, subscribe, share it, whatever. Thank you very much, everybody. Have, ha have a happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah.